Hey everybody and welcome to a redeeming wild ride with Steve-O. This week we have controversial rapper Lil Xan who's very open and candid about his drug addiction, about frankly a lot of mistakes that he's made and uh, he got me really rooting for him and that's why I really see this as redemption for the kid. Very juicy podcast as well and speaking of juicy have I told you about Liquid Death, this canned water company which is basically saving the world because they're trying to bring death to plastic. Plastic, as I'm sure you know, is killing the world. Meanwhile, the infinitely recyclable aluminum cans Liquid Death uses are saving the world. And gosh, is it exciting. They've got these new flavored waters now mango chainsaw severed lime and bury it alive this stuff's so delicious i can't even keep it in the house you know it's true and the company's doing so well it's now in target albertson 7-eleven whole foods i mean it's just popping up everywhere and i love it because everybody is just getting on the team to save the world now you can get this without even leaving your house and not pay a dime for shipping because if you go to liquiddeath.com slash stevo it's free shipping for all of your orders of water and merch very generous of liquid death a great company that's saving the world. So one more time, go to liquiddeath.com slash Steva for this insanely generous deal. And now let's get into it. So is that okay uh, to have a Red Bull? Of course. Okay. Yeah, probably, probably, you know. This is like a good... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's wherever you feel comfortable. Oh, yeah. I, I've done podcasts before. We go like all in. Uh, yeah, thank you, man, for having me on. Dude, thank you, man. It was I'm killer stoked. that you reached out. But I, I'm still not sure if you were just responding to us having reached out to you. Uh, well, wait, have you, did you guys reach out first? Well, I saw I the know. clip. I watched the clip. Oh, uh, but there was, oh, with the, with the Island Boys. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay, yeah. cool. And then I was like, well, I'll shoot my shot, because, like, uh, I, I did Tim Dillon's podcast first. Okay. And then I did a couple of little jumpers, and uh, I'm doing Impulsive in, like, uh, a week with, like, Logan Paul. Cool. So, yeah, I'm trying to just, you know. Cool. And this is cool as fuck, too, because I grew up watching <laughs> Jackass, you know? Like, All right. I feel like we have a lot of similarities, too, because I'm just coming out of, like, my, you know, real bad drug phase. Like, I was really fucking bad, too. You know? All right. Let's keep you on the mic. <clears throat> and uh, We're rolling in everything? <clears throat> yes, sir. Just, all right. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Lil Xan. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Yeah. How y'all doing, man? Thank you for having me. Thanks for I, being uh, here. San Diego. I San like, Diego. Like, like San Diego, uh -huh. right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, funny story about that. My parents actually wanted to name me Sam Diego. Oh, that's funny. And I was like, please don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, wow. But yeah, thank you guys again for having me, man. For sure, man. It was uh, it was pretty rad. You reached out on Instagram because, of course, I follow you. Yeah. And <laughs> I uh, came right into my DM box, and I was like, no way, man. Uh, because we had just reached out to you to get you on the podcast. I didn't see. I didn't even see that. That's crazy. It's happened. We reached out to each other about making this yeah. happen. It was meant to be. Yeah, it was meant, meant to be because I didn't even see the first one, but I saw the the clip on thing, and I was like, "Well, I'll shoot my shot." You know, I I love the podcast. I watch it. Like, yeah, weekly. Super you saw cool. the Island Boys podcast. Yeah, yeah. I remember one of the yeah. Island Boys said that uh, that he speaks with you, <laughs> that the relationship with him is was that true? Yeah, that is true, but. I, I also heard I don't know if this is true because I don't watch uh like some like Island Boy podcasts and like when uh, they're just not my favorite but um we used to have a, a friendship but they just kept calling me every day like three <laughs> times a day and I think they got butt hurt because I just refused to keep answering you know because they would ask dumb questions not talking shit I'm just saying they would ask. Huh. I'm like yeah, they were excited, man. Yeah, like, I've always been yeah, that yeah, way. Like, I'm they would, excited. Yeah, they, they're <laughs> cool people, but they would just be like, "Oh, how much money you make? You have more money." I, don't, I, don't, I just don't want to talk about this. Like, you know right what? Uh, 
And I think that's where they got butt hurt and started talking a little shit on the internet about me because I stopped responding to them. Right. But I have nothing ah. against the Island Boys. I, and I, he was talking they, they on were, the show about, he was talking to you like when you were in the hospital, right? Was that accurate? I didn't, I haven't seen mm-hmm. anything actually. I, 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 I've been trying to stay off the, like, yeah, yeah the interweb. Okay. <laughs> Um, I thought that those guys were legitimately talented when they just started freestyling on our podcast. Did you see that? No, I did not see that one. Dude, they, they just were good. fucking bust. I mean, yeah. now, I'm sure it was kind of prepared to some pre- extent. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It wasn't. Look- Every uh, freestyle is a little pre-written. Yeah, sometimes. but you can tell when it's like, wow, this is just a totally yeah, just pre-written straight, verse. Like, freestyle, and it but, wasn't um, like that. Yeah, I, 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 it was I, a little that, sloppy. It was like a little, like it was real. You know, yeah, it was good. I felt oh, that, that's I felt good. Then, yeah. yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I have nothing against them. I like them. I like I. There's a lot of similarities between me and them. You know, we look crazy. It, it just different timing. Um, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, so I gotta just come right out of the gate and say I've been confused. By, yeah, a lot a couple, of us. by by a couple <laughs> things because uh, like we spoke on the phone the other day, yes, like right after you reached out, and uh, I told you that I had seen you on TMZ, yeah, and that the story was you just got out of rehab and that you're sober, mm-hmm. and uh, forty days today, and, and, and forty the, days, the, congrats, the, that's, that's great. The story was also that the rehab you went to somehow encourages smoking marijuana yeah well about that well i went to a detox center first called vita nova shout out to them um they don't allow weed uh at that they just do the normal uh scheduled things they do that's in newport beach i was uh they gave me a scholarship actually so i don't have to pay um so i'm gra- very grateful for the people at vita nova um and i detoxed for 30 days there got clean so i wasn't withdrawing when i went to the other place, the place you're referring to, the Heavenly right. Center, which is uh, Steve LaBelle, Scott Storch, the producer. Gotcha. Um, and a couple other people that run it. And the Heavenly Center, a.k.a. you know, abbreviated THC, you know, they don't force you to smoke weed. Uh, you know, they don't like, like, you know, like say you have to smoke weed to like get better. They just say if it helps, it helps. And I'm not a big weed smoker myself. Um, <clears throat> but that sort of confuses me. But more because we saw, we went back and looked at that actual TMZ clip where uh, they, they, I guess you were on Hollywood Boulevard or something. I was at Boa's Bo Steakhouse. Boa's gotcha. Steakhouse, yeah. And you said in that clip to TMZ, you were like, I'm a big pot guy. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. And, and, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm going to come clean. I smoke a blunt like maybe every, like, I'll smoke two blunts a week. But okay. I was maybe I was just I was trying to like I mean, um, I mean whatever dude. I'm not mad at you. Yeah. I'm just like I was kind of I was kind of trying to shout out the Heavenly Center more because they reposted it. So okay. I wanted them to think that yeah, like the it, it helped me but out then, a lot. But then just yesterday, like you like you posted this thing with like I, like I, I ate edibles and I got so zooted and loaded. Oh, oh no 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 that that scripted that was scripted. Okay. Uh, I just did a collaboration with uh, my good friends uh, that that make edibles and weed called Gassy, and, uh, so, so and that was more of like a, and uh, we did a scripted thing. I I don't I don't eat edibles. I'll end up at the hospital on edibles. Sure. You know what I mean? And uh, we just did a a, a collaboration for uh, Keith World Joints and Delta 8 gummies. So they paid me to make that whole skit where I'm going in to in and yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, it looked perfectly stuff. entertaining. I'm sure yeah, it performed but well. I didn't eat, I, I didn't eat any of that, but uh, I did I do, I did smoke a couple of the joints, but it's not like my main thing. Like, yeah, I mean, hey, what, dude. Can, can I ask what, what you went what, to? Yeah, what was your main thing? When you said you were like uh, detoxing, like what were you detoxing? Uh, when I went to Vita Nova, I was coming off of probably taking... Uh, 20 nothing it, there was no fentanyl in my system by the way uh these Why, were all, is that a rumor that's going around they had fentanyl no 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 i'm just saying that there wasn't because usually people get fake shit you know what i mean yeah. everything's fake does on anybody the take fentanyl on purpose yes yeah oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah yeah because yeah. it seems like it's all these like fake pills where they they, they cut with fentanyl they're the, the blue the little blue uh Perk 30s are like the most commonly faked ones. Well, I had a guy yesterday that was he was in rehab. He's like, I just went in there and he's like, everything's cut with it anyway, so I might as well just do fentanyl. And he's like, if that makes sense, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense the problem, at all. The problem with these fake pills is like, at first people didn't like them because they wanted what they wanted. You know what I mean? But now they like they like say like they like Xanax. So when they were getting fake Xanax, they didn't like it. But now. 
that the Xanax has fentanyl in it, they're addic- they they like the fentanyl and they're getting addicted to a whole nother substance, opiates. How common is it to have fentanyl in something that people are It doing? is probably, uh, 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 the things being sold in LA right now, I would say 95% of everything is, uh, every drug is cut with uh, fentanyl. Some, so it's wow. like the fake pill where they press it. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. cocaine, it's it's, it's everything, it's, heroin. It, that's what killed my friend Mac Miller. It was uh, fentanyl laced cocaine. Can but, you help us understand yeah. why on fucking, uh, is why, it like how, they're why making, like what the, cocaine and fentanyl it's like it's like it's what they used to cut it you know what i mean like how they like cut baby laxative or powder yeah, now yeah. they're doing fentanyl and, and, to make it stronger and, and but. it makes it it makes your product a little stronger but what the problem is is this is like you know with the labs wherever they fucking make it someone adds two pounds more of the wrong batch and then you got a deadly batch that's gonna hit the streets you know what I mean? Like they 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 miscalculate because yeah. they're in jungles. They're not in the laboratories. Right. Making it's like music. whoops, fucking yeah, whoops! I put a teaspoon in now. Yeah. Like, did I already put a that. cup yeah. in or did I not put a cup <laughs> you know in? Know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Yeah, I wonder if they're trying to make people addicted to fentanyl. They are. You know, like get them yeah. off the coke and slowly introduce fentanyl, and then all you're selling because is fentanyl. Because fun fact, fentanyl back like 20 years ago was like a very niche drug. It was only used as like anesthesia and pain medicine. It's like open heart surgery yeah. to keep people it, it, out it, for longer. Wasn't it like a uh, on a patch and they would put the yeah, patch it was on a the patch. skin? It was a but patch. But then people would like chew the patch instead of having it on yeah, their skin. Yeah, that's actually how it started. But like, wow. it, like if you would have went into a hospital 20 years ago or no, not a hospital, a rehab and said, they would have been like, what are you addicted to? And said fentanyl, they would have been like, what, what is that? Where did you get that? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But what, what, um, so you didn't finish what you were saying. What would you go in for? Your 20 Vita milligrams Nova, of- I was taking about 20 Vicodins or mm. what they call them, hydrocodons uh, now. And uh, about 10, 10 Xanax a day. But everything was real because I was paying out of pocket for like old people on hospices scripts and you know because i i don't like fentanyl i've never been addicted yeah. to fentanyl myself what's old people on hospices like scripts? you know like like uh like when you're they getting have, prescribed legit stuff at a legit yeah. business versus like scoring on the street because so, they have like one or two years left to live and and, right, right, right. and they want to make extra money so they sell it and stuff what's ah. what's the detox like uh from xanax is it like vertigo i heard it's kind of like your vision it, flips it's like let's face it If you got a detox, that might mean that your lifestyle is less than healthy. But let me tell you what is totally healthy because I am in love with it. Athletic Greens. This is a natural supplement that is absolutely delicious and fills in all of the gaps in my diet, which sadly I have some of. Uh, Now, every serving is convenient comprehensive and literally gives me all of the nutrition I need for a whole day. It's got 75 different vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. It's like the craziest, healthiest thing, and I swear by it. I use it every day. It improves my gut health. It improves my cognitive health really helps my brain it gives me greens that honestly i'm not eating so it's saving my butt and this company's got a great deal for you if you go to athleticgreens.com slash stevo they're gonna send you five of these travel packs comprehensive convenient daily nutrition times five, plus a year's supply of vitamin D, which boosts your overall immunity. And you get that with your first order if you go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo. I swear by it, and you're going to be a much healthier person if you swear by it too. So get on over to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo. And now let's talk about detoxing. Okay, like I've I've detoxed at my at my worst was probably November of 2020. Um, I actually was smoking uh, Perk 30s, mm. um, real Perk 30s, still not fentanyl, and I was taking 20 fake Zans a day that I later found out were laced with heroin in it. And I remember uh, looking in the mirror one day and just being like, if I keep doing this, I'm gonna die. Like I could already start seeing like my cheekbones going and stuff. 
And um, I'm sorry, what was the... The question was, because like when you're detoxing off opiates, you're kind of like flu-like symptoms, you're sick, you're nauseous. Yeah, it's like... Xanax is like... Okay, oh yeah. Uh, I would much rather withdraw off opiates than Xanax because um, uh, the two drugs that you can actually die from withdrawals from are alcohol and Xanax because you can have seizures. Jesus. Oh, and you started yeah. having seizures, right? You were talking about that. Uh, no, last time I had a seizure was uh, November of 2020. I haven't had uh, any since. Okay, and was that seizure from quitting? Uh, going cold turkey off of Xanax. Right, yeah, right. opiate, opiate, op- I don't even say. Opiates, like, you can lock someone in a room for like 10 days. They're going to go through hell, but they're not going to die. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I mean, necessarily. Might, I have hunger or something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hunger. Like, you don't feed yeah, that, them. The withdrawal's not going to kill you. It's like, you know, I they don't have a dishonest water. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna uh, die. But, um, yeah, so I went in for uh, about 20 Norgos a day and, and 20 real Zans. No fentanyl in my system. And it, it was a smooth process. It, uh, it went well. Yeah, it was a nice good. facility. I, I did. I attended therapy and yoga. And what what that. brought about the decision to go in there? Was it like there was an intervention it, it, on you? It, it actually came uh, from just me wanting to change. Uh, I because um, I felt like you know I'm 25 now, and I I just couldn't do it anymore because I don't want to be because when you go into those rehab centers, there's people in their 50s that I've been there hundreds of times. And they always, and I've been to seven, you know, in the last like year, and um, they always tell me the same thing: you don't want to be this age in here. You want to nip it in the bud when For you're sure. younger. So, I got sober when I was thirty-three. You know, some something, something like yeah, yeah like that. So this time, I I know for, I, I'm I'm so strong-headed. I know I have it this time. Um, I, I would have loved to have gotten it sooner than thirty-three, and. Um, strong headed it, be careful with that yeah because like what it is 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 uh surrendered you know like being you ha- no being you have to you have to be it. selfish uh completely selfish to yourself and surrender to the program right that's right exactly that, my dad is, is actually the one that told me surrender to the program because he was addicted to meth uh for three years like five years ago he's been sober ever since so uh, he relates a little bit, and he told me this time you just gotta surrender completely to the program, and I did this time, and I it it helped out uh, feel good. tremendously. I feel I feel really good. good. I'm way past the withdrawals. Um, I, my skin is uh, finally getting healthier looking. Yeah. You know, like good man. Yeah. And uh, so you're going on tour again soon. You said the May twenty fifth. The twenty eighth, actually, yes. Twenty eighth. The last tour you did sold out in five minutes. Mm-hmm. Have you put you posted this tour? Uh, this tour it's almost sold out. Yeah. Almost sold out. We're doing uh that that tour was uh, a bigger tour, like a thousand, twelve hundred people. We're doing more uh because uh, this is the first tour since the pandemic. We're doing at like three hundred capacity shows, and they're almost all sold out at this right. moment yeah so i'm very blessed uh still have the fandom because i took a lot of time um uh, off social media and away from the fans to focus on my sobriety and more importantly time out of the studio yes that, i right? took a lot I, yeah i have a lot of music uh very good music too saved up like i i have my album finished um it's self-titled diego because this is going to be the last project I drop under the name Lil Xan. It's going to be Lil Xan Diego. Then after that, Spotify, YouTube channel, everything is just going to be Diego. And I'm just going to be an artist as Diego. Diego. Because I want to leave Lil Xan in the past and just be Diego. And be an <clears throat> advocate for addiction. And was That that was a decision made in sobriety? Like, I don't want to be yes, linked to this? Yeah, in, during the, re, the multiple rehabs since uh, yeah. that was, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. I think that's yeah, like, would you have kids coming up to you like, man, like, I take so much Xanax, too, and you're like, ugh. Like, yeah, I ugh. have that, too, but I also have a lot of people saying that I've helped them out a lot uh, yeah. in my Instagram DMs, and and they come up to me uh, and say the same thing, and, and that, that makes, like, my fucking gear, because that's all I've ever wanted to do in this world was help people, like, uh, not not trying to sound like a fucking saint, but um, even if it, it, you wanted to help people and you wanted to fuck hoes, fuck hoes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely have done a lot of that, bro. Across like, I've had sex with so many women that don't even speak English. 
<laughs> and that sounds pretty bad, but I'm talking about like Europe and stuff. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, you're, you're kind of a, a legend in the threesome department. Is that right? <laughs> yes. What's the secret to pulling a threesome? Three, uh, like just a threesome or, th- or with your girl? Like having, there's two types, you know, it's like. Walk us through it. Okay. Yeah. We're well, going to need the whole menu. Here. <laughs> <laughs> just for a regular threesome. Uh, I remember I was in London and uh, my my DJ was uh, invited two girls over and he was going to sleep with both of them. But he was uh, occupied doing something else. So I came in the room and... Wait, wait, like... What is it? What kind? He was of, going to the bathroom, and that was like occupied doing something else. He was. He, was, be, he wasn't in the room. He was like. It's got to be pretty important to pass up two yeah. chicks. Yeah. He was, yeah, the he, guy probably just stepped out to make a phone yeah, call, yeah, and Lil Zan swooped in and yeah, fucked them yeah. both. I didn't. Ex- I didn't know the chicks were in there, to be honest. So uh, he's like down the street grabbing food, and they're like, <laughs> "Oh, where's John coming?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know, but you guys can chill in here." And it, I don't know. We just. It. I just love language. We just started talking about it touching each other and then i had sex with the two girls that he was supposed to have sex with that's a bad example maybe a bad friend move <laughs> definitely a bad friend i'm sorry john um but to a normal threesome when you're on a tour bus and you you know after a show they all come to your tour bus you know to get autographs or you know pictures and i do that i love doing that i love i'll never deny a fan a picture or an autograph i Anybody that supports me, I support them. Um, but, you know, you get this it's groupies. The groupies, and there's usually a part of a tour bus, and you probably know this uh, too, that has like a back that slides back the door. It's like <laughs> a little thing. And that's where all the business would go down and like the three girls giving you head at once for. The most I ever did was in New Zealand. I had a, and, they, and all, every girl in this uh, six, well, it was five girls plus me. What is that? That's a six sum. Six sum. And they were very beautiful New Zealand girls, and it, it that was the the most amazing moment of my life. Six girls sucking your dick, and having sex, and because they were all participating with each other too, they were by. So it was like it was like a rotation, like coming in, switching over, and you know. It was, it's like the sushi joint that has the carousel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. but I was very proud. I, I I I think I went afterwards into the bathroom and uh, looked in the mirror and was like. Uh, your life begins today. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many times have you thought back and jerked off to that moment? Um, probably a couple times <laughs> for sure. Probably a couple times, yeah. But I, I, I cherish that moment more as just wow, because I'm, I, I got no hoes in high school. Like, um, you know, I dropped, I, I did drop out in ninth grade, but like, <laughs> do, <laughs> I didn't even go to high school. <laughs> I, didn't not, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't have enough time, maybe. In that no, week. No, 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 no. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't get enough hoes in middle school. No. Um, you went to high school for seven days. Seven days. Uh, yeah, oh, for real? But, wow. but no, like, I don't know. But I had a lot of friends that went to high school, and so I still stayed in touch with them. I had like a couple ugly girlfriends. They were good people, though, good personalities, but mm. I wasn't getting girls you know like right. i wasn't popular or anything. i was a nerd i played video games i thought i was going to be like a professional <laughs> video game player mm. um so help us understand what happened with the, the this famous g-wagon the famous g-wagon okay. did you ever get it back uh the, yeah well actually this is some recent stuff too i did not this, this is for the record i did not sell my uh g-wagon for opiates I never would have done that. I used to have a chauffeur, and he, but he was a good friend of mine named Curly, and he would drive me places. If he needed places, to, uh, he was from my hometown, so sometimes he'd have to drive it back to go see his parents. I'd let him use it and stuff. And um, what happened was, uh, stats, it, it needed uh, maintenance because those G-Wagons are always in the shop. You know what I mean? It, it's I would never get a G-Wagon again. So Stat said, "Yo, I'm gonna take it in." And, this is Stat. And Stat, your your former my, oh, manager. My former manager, Stat Quo. So he tricked Curly and said, "Yo, I'll, I'm gonna pay for the maintenance fixes," and he came and took the car and just never gave it back. And they spun the narrative as if I sold it mm-hmm. for opiates. But what it what the G wagon is now is we we came to an agreement just to sell it and split split it 
uh, 50 50. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I didn't sell it for opiates. But, that, but, but if I understood correctly, you had put like all, all the money in Oh, I, I got fucked over. I got fucked over. Yeah. I got fucked over, but I. I'm 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 debating whether to take it to court or just let it slide, um, because I did put one hundred and twenty thousand dollars and it was one hundred and forty and I was making eight hundred dollar payments, so I did get fucked over. But I I I'm just I think this is one where I'm just gonna let it live. You know what I mean? That I mean, that that I can see the logic in that. I mean, is it hard to keep people around you to trust, or do you have a crew of people? Or I is have that kind of I have the the best like those people out there like are the best people. I have probably like five people, five friends, and my and my girlfriend. Yeah. That's it. Uh, other than that, just acquaintances. So <clears throat> and I, business partners, I guess. We had T Pain on the podcast, and he was talking about how he had made like forty million dollars, and then just blown through it, and got That's to a point where he could not afford a Whopper at Burger King. <laughs> and uh, the Whopper. And then he came. And then he came back. You know, like I wondered. I don't know what the particulars are of your financial situation, but it sounded like. All of that talk around the G wagon was like the the, the remainder of the thirty thousand dollars needed to pay it off. That yeah. it just wasn't there. Yeah. And so it's like it kind of gave me the impression that you had been like on fire, just making money like crazy, and then all of a sudden, yeah. like just slow it down, and that went away like pretty quick. Yeah. Well, like, uh, I, and I'm very open and talk um talking about my financial situation right now. No, I'm not broke. You know what I mean? I support my dad. I support my mom. I bought my mom a house in Temecula, uh, paid full in cash. I bought my dad a house in uh, Corona, very close to each other. Um, I did that. Um, there was a video where you did say that you were broke. Really? Oh, no, no. That video was satire because I was at uh, the, the guy who created the app Wish. Uh, -huh. uh, Peter, he's a good friend of me. He's like a billionaire, uh -huh. and that that was just I, I can't believe people didn't pick that that was satire because I'm walking through a mansion <clears> like <throat> while I'm doing it, and then showing like the Venador and the, the golf course. Wait, 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 I think the clip that we saw it, it was like you were like, oh, whatever brand deal, take it. You know, let's do the brand. It was deal. a day in the life of the No Jumper podcast. Yeah, take oh. take the brand, the, whatever whatever the brand. Well, deal if is. it was during the No Jumper time, I definitely wasn't broke then. And I, yo, yeah, and I mean, whatever. I mean, I think broke is a, is a suggest suggestive. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll I'll say this. From when from 2018 when I signed my deal, I'm nowhere near that rich uh, as of now. But I am very not like I'm far from broke. So I'm, you're you're comfortable. I'm comfortable. I, and, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot. No, I just, no, you're good. I just uh, you know having had that conversation with T Pain. And then kind of looking at, at what your story has seemed like over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, I just feel like if you're now in the position where you're going back on tour and you're selling tickets well, it's like you kind of have a rebirth. Yeah. And so now, like, it, I, I want to think that you're going to take a have a different attitude about yeah. all the money that you earn and and how you manage your opportunities. And I and totally situation. agree with that. And and the first step with that uh for, you know, um being more uh fiscally responsible with my money was getting clean to That's have a true. clear mind. Clarity equal <clears throat> is going to make me lots of money cuz this tour I'm netting is going to I'm going to bring back 100k. I uh you know have a decent amount uh, in my bank account right now enough to still support my parents with uh, the groceries and stuff uh, enough to have a nice uh, you know little condo in LA um, and yeah it, and I, I knew I needed to get sober before I could start be adulting because I feel like me becoming an adult was stunted because I had when I first got famous at 21 I was still a kid and I was already addicted coming into this stuff you know, so and but and at that point when I blew up, I had assistants around me doing everything for me. Right. Like so, it was hard. Like you know to so now since 24, I've been and now like 25, I'm learning how to do everything on my own because it was stunning because I had someone to do that for me, someone to do that for right. me. Right. But now that I'm sober, 
um, thank God, uh, and I have a clear sense, a clear sense of mind. Everything has been going fucking wonderful. I'm, I'm on antidepressants, affects her. They work wonderful for me. Um, and yeah, everything is just going so great. My girlfriend is a wonderful. Uh, my friends are wonderful and they're very supportive. None of them do drugs. They smoke a little weed and uh, and drink occasionally. But man, when when I just met your dad outside, yeah, I'm my like, wait a second, that's if, if you told me, my dad's the coolest guy, man. How, dude, he's like my age. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's uh, fifty. He just turned fifty. Holy <laughs> wow. shit! Looks like he's he thirty five. Yeah. My mom looks young too. That's why I look sixteen. <laughs> Damn, wow. I mean, that's really, really insane yeah. that, that your dad's older than I am because he... Yeah, I was looking at your dad and I was like, dude, no, his dad's I, my I, age. I, I, told my, I tell my dad this every year. I'm like, bro, you're getting younger. <laughs> you have like the Benjamin Button like syndrome. Yeah, yeah. So you have good genes. Yeah, and my dad also is a, a big reason I became a musician because when we were younger, we he had uh, an extensional vinyl collection. Mm. We'd listen to everything from Sid Vicious to Beethoven to uh, Blur to Gorillaz, you know, so he got me uh, to appreciate music to how I did. I never, I, I wanted to be a photographer mm. and document the underground LA <clears throat> scene, but just from that background of loving music so much and it being so important to me, I think it helped be, help me become an artist, you know, because I appreciate cinematography and music the most. What, what was a day in the life like of you, like a week before you blew up to like celebrity? A week before, like what were you doing on a day-to-day basis? I was basis? sleeping at my manager's studio. It was like a warehouse. It was nice. It was a nice studio, like a nice. I was sleeping on the couch. But you're got, broke. But I, I was essentially broke. I mean, just no money. Sleeping maybe a uh, hundred dollars in in my pocket, not even a bank account. Um, driving a Nissan Versa. You know what I mean? Dude, that's and, a great cars, man. I had one of those. Steve had one of those after he made all of his money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might get enough. <laughs> that was the first car Steve bought after he made money. I might I might, I might soup up a Nissan Versa nowadays. Sure. But, um, um, yeah, and then we uh, we linked with the good Cole Bennett of Lyrical Lemonade. He's a good friend of mine. Um, we have six videos, and um, but he did my first one, Betrayed. And, that was the one that was a and that banger. Was that, thank you, I appreciate that. And that was the one, and uh, that blew me up. So after that, that broke week, the I did that song came out on Lyrical Lemonade, and then the next day it has ten million views, and I have never had ten million anything. <laughs> so I'm like looking at this like who's who's fucking with me, who like you know what I mean? I'm like like because I was making music like as a hobby almost at this point. Um, but it was real. And you had the full face tats at that time? I had like five. I, I've gone overboard at this point, but I had five. <laughs> I did. It's a little much. It's but, hard um, to find the yeah, line. And then after know. that, watching my Instagram go up like to 70,000 followers in two hours. And then it was at 100,000 the next day. Damn. And then three days later, 300,000. And then... Um, two months later, 1.2 million, and I'm at Columbia signing a deal. It was it was so wow, fast. Heavy. And then where, was there? Oh, go ahead, Steve. Where, where are you at in the Columbia deal now? Uh, I'm independent. Me and Columbia uh, uh, separated ways. We uh, had uh, just. Uh, Did you finish out the contract by delivering however many albums it was? No, I didn't finish out the contract. I I didn't like the the creative control. They they didn't give me much creative control. Um, they wanted to kind of turn me into something else that I didn't want to be. So we agreed to part ways. But unfortunately, in order to do that, I had to give them uh, all my all my masters. So I don't make I don't make money off my music. But when now all your masters, that would be you, you uh, have the, the one master album. like that would just be betrayed, uh, colorblind, and slingshot. Because betrayed was the first track on your your first album. Yes, yes. So the the basically the three biggest songs. Well, well, I did a song when I was dating Noah Cyrus called "Live or Die." Uh, so f they own four of my biggest songs, masters. Everything else I own. Okay. But it still sucks, you know, that, you know, you don't own, like, Betrayed or Colorblind. With but then again, sure. but, but then again, I mean, historically, like, the music industry has been this catch-22 of you can't blow up unless you have a record deal, but you can't make money unless you own your own shit. Yeah. So you served the purpose of blowing up. Now, 
theoretically you can put out your own music own it and actually make the money on yeah it. and that's what me and my new i just got a new team um and that's what we're doing now we're getting i got a publicist now i i'm so i have things now that i should have had years and years ago you know what i mean well you're only 25 so <laughs> i no, no, but i mean like when i was right. with my old team you know what Un- i mean understood yeah now, like uh there was a lot of criticism about that first album yeah and and, and uh, i can tell you why if you want to improve your future you gotta have an understanding of your past is that fair to say that's why my whoop band is helping me so immensely this is the most sophisticated fitness tracking device known to man and they just came out with the whoop band 4.0 which comes with the waterproof wireless charger And as always, they've got a great deal for the listeners of the Wild Ride podcast. Now, keep in mind that with your Whoop membership, you've got a strain coach, which is going to take all of the data that the band pulls from you, and it's going to tell you what you need to do, what you're focusing on, how you can be healthier. It's going to give you all of the insights into your sleep, your recovery, the calories you're burning, the activities you're doing. It's going to get you organized to become a healthier person. And if you go to whoop.com, that's W-H-O-O-P, Dot com and use the promo code Stevo, you're going to get 15% off your membership at checkout. Plus, you get this killer band with the waterproof wireless charger totally for free. I'm telling you, you want to join the movement, you want to support the Wild Ride podcast, and you want to be a healthier, happier person. So go to whoop.com, use the promo code Stevo, and get on board. All right. All right. Now, let's see what happened with that album. Um, it was very rushed. Um, uh, my manager is Stat Quo, which, fun fact about Stat Quo, he was uh, the first artist signed to Shady Aftermath with Dr. Dre and Eminem. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, so he has he was actually popping out in like the early 2000s as mm-hmm. a rapper. But that didn't work out for him, so he went behind the scenes and wanted to manage the artist. And I was his first artist to blow up. Um and uh fuck I just lost Charlie. Like, yeah, I mean it's it's Charlie. okay. Like uh I I felt like you, you were saying, you know, why the album was criticized. Oh, yo, the yeah, the the, the I mean album. like wait, what No, if, yo, it was rushed. What, what if we just said you weren't sober, you didn't put in the work? I wasn't sober. Uh I didn't put in the work enough. I mean, the, the colorblind on it was good. Moonlight on it was good. Uh, basically all the records that were already doing good that were on the album, th- they were good songs on the album right. and, and a couple others, but it was rushed. Um, and I was on drugs and I feel like my team, I- I'm not blaming my team for this at all. It's, you know, but I feel like they should have, you know, list cause they're powerful people in the industry. I feel like they should have listened to this and been like, we should not put this out. Okay. That, that, I mean... That's fair. Sadly, they did put it out. You did put it out, and it's your name on it. Yeah. Um, but you're, and, uh, you're fucking blown up because of it. Well, you yeah. were already, you had blown up already, yeah, right? Yeah, you had blown up mm. off like, the single. When you signed the deal, what was your motivation to do that? Because was it just a big signing bonus or something? For, uh, something for what? For signing, signing, signing with Columbia. Signing with um, Columbia. Because you had already Because uh, my, my uh, previous manager, Stat Quo, was uh he was friends with uh uh jimmy Iveen's mm-hmm. um nephew okay. and they they they're like columbia family so they wanted me to just be co- that go with, with them you know kind of stuff yeah and and i bring up the criticism of that first album because like i think that it's healthy to just acknowledge like what, whatever the issue was so that you can address it moving forward because like yes. you said you've got you've got a bunch of music and it's good music yeah because that album was dropped in 2018 and it's, and you know it's been years and years right. since i've dropped because i refuse to drop something that's going to turn out like that again you know what i mean right that's so, what i want to hear do I, I want your next album to be like fucking it's no banger. It, it's like bro it's it's like it's like it's like a mixture of rap and indie. It's kind of like indie, ra- indie and rap. It's got a lot more instruments. And presumably, you recorded it before you just went into rehab. 
Uh, I've been recording um, for the last seven months for this album, okay. in, like in between rehabs and stuff. But it's sounding really good. There's some like a uh, lot more instruments, a lot more like uh, like violins and pop punk stuff. And I got you know the typical bangers, and but uh, more topics, more more lyricism, more but oh, but but also retaining the little Zan style, you know. Mm -hmm. Are you putting it out on your own? Uh, I believe I'm gonna put it out on my own. Yes. So nice. you don't make any money up front when you put it on your own, right? There's no royalties. Right, there's no advance. There's no, yeah. there's no advance. There are royalties. But, but the most important, like like I said, I'm living comfortably. But the most important thing for me for this next thing is just to show people how much I've evolved and that I'm ready. I'm ready to play ball, like and to be taken serious, you know? Because this next album, in my opinion, is. I'm so proud of it. Good. I'm very proud of it, you know? That's and, good. And, I, and got, I, I could make nothing off it. I just want them to know, like, let's go. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You got, cool. you got any features on it? Uh, It's just going to be just strictly me. I just wanted to... Uh, it's give not too late to add features, though, right? Because no, that always I, I helps. Think, I think my uh, my friend PNB Rock, who's a big rapper, might hop on a couple things and uh, some low-key artists. But for the most part, since it's self-titled my name, I kind of just want it to be, you know, just mostly me... Um, and you know, yeah. I, I started rapping again. Is that what you're gonna say? Well, <laughs> I, I was, no, I was getting there. <laughs> yeah, you should you get be Steve a good on rapper, track. man. <clears throat> I mean, yo, would you be on the album? Come on. I mean, I got, I might, I. I'm, I might, I might drop some bars. <laughs> Good, yeah. Dude, like, We're I, trying to I, get him into the studio. I need, I need, I need Steve to do the intro. <laughs> uh, dude, I would love that. That'd be sick. Dude, I would love that. And, and I gotta say too, man, that uh, you know, for 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 all the stuff that that I've seen. Like uh, I, it's really refreshing how how candid you are. Thank you. And uh, you know, like I, I think you're in a good spot, dude. Thank I you. Think yeah, you're in a good place. I, I appreciate that because, like, the thing with the internet and the pandemic definitely like fast forwarded the internet so much because people had nothing to do it. Like, evolved yeah. it way quicker. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's such a false narrative of me on the internet that I'm like a bar hard retard like illiterate like a dick asshole like mean person but like i always tell people and I, I know it's not possible to meet everybody in the world and have five minutes to talk to them but if you would just sit down and talk to me for five minutes you would you would probably like me because i'm genuinely a nice guy i'm polite you know I don't want to start any issues. I just want to help people. And if you still hate me, then that's your decision. I can't change that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just don't believe everything you see on the internet because it's not, a it's lot not of it's not real. Do you, I, I agree with that. And and I, I don't know that I've seen anything suggesting that you're not a nice guy. I, I haven't heard anything saying you're Well, an there was the Tupac uh, incident. Something that you said Tupac yeah, was boring. Yeah, but that was back when <laughs> I was barred out and they would wake me up at 5 a.m. and I was cranky uh to go to the iheart radios you know and i rated and and i don't feel this way anymore tupac is a legend but i i wanted to get the interview over with the interviewer was annoying and she just kept speeding and she's like what do you feel about tupac and i was like two out of ten and that was <laughs> like such a big catalyst of hate you know what i mean uh, yeah but at the same time so but, uh, but you don't like, have to like uh, but tupac, i was i was, like, right. I, I was barred out i, I was cr like cranky you know and, but you just got your dick sucked by six chicks. Six chicks. <laughs> fucking ten chicks. You know, yeah, you're who, just thinking who about knows these chicks. Who, dick, who yeah. knows where I got my dick sucked by? Uh, no, but, you know, like, um, yeah, but no, Tupac is definitely a legend, and I I, I would like to uh, stop receiving uh, death threats for that. Do you, have, do you have a, uh, I, I don't know why I asked this question, I but it's so fascinating. Like, do you have a top five uh, best rappers of all time, in your opinion? Well, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, in order from like um, five to one, five to one, one being the best. Yeah. yeah. Okay, five. I would have to say XXX and Tassian. He was a good friend of mine. Uh huh. Um, four, Lil Peep. Um, I I didn't know him, but his his music was amazing. Uh, three, Juice World. Rest in peace to him too. We all came kind of up from the SoundCloud era. Wow, dude, all three guys he's named have passed. It's sad, right? Mm -hmm. uh, three, uh, f uh, so we're on two. 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 We're on to two. Two, I would say King Vaughn, rest in peace again. Um, and one who actually was a good friend of mine, Mac Miller. Mm. Fuck. Uh, all passed. And, and it's so all five. What did they all die of? 
Uh, uh, drug overdoses and gunshots. Gu- yeah, gunshots and Mac was the drug overdose. Yeah. But a, a story about Mac was um, I started listening to Mac in 2009 when I was like 12 or something, you know. And um, and I, I fell in love with his music. And I fell in love with how every album, it was a different Mac. It was a, it, like his whole discography from the beginning to the end is... And he's just watching the evolution was amazing. Mm -hmm. So he became my favorite artist throughout the years of me dropping out of high school, bumping his music. And then my music brought us together later in life, which blew my mind because that was my idol. You know what I mean? Mm. And then he invited me to actually what would be his last show at the Hotel Cafe in, uh, uh, in, in downtown. And um, I got to see him perform 100 people. It was like you had to win like a radio giveaway to go there. Very wow. intimate. I met his family. I met Jason Sudeikis when he was with Olivia Wilde back there, John Mayer. Wow. And uh, and Mac uh, was like, yo, uh, next week, let's, uh, or like next month, let's uh, uh, come over and let's jam out. And I was like, wow, I'm going to make a song with my idol. That's crazy, you know? So I left. Uh, it said it was a good show. And then uh, I was born September 6th. Uh, he died September 7th mm. and so we never got to do that and, and then after that after Mac Miller passed that that would that hurt me the most that would hurt me the most yeah and you decided that you were gonna not make music this, you know if if, uh, if my producer is here he'd make fun of that uh, comment right now so much he says why do you retire every month it's like <laughs> you know what I mean I I, well, right. I, I I do it as a joke you know what mm. I mean but at the, at the time with the Mac thing when I was crying on live I probably did feel like I wanted to retire, but now I just do it as a fucking joke. Like, I'm like, oh, I retire until I come back, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. I just think, like, whenever somebody loses a loved one, you know, it's it's sad. You you should grieve. I, I urge people to grieve selfishly. You know, and then get it, get over it, and move on, and and let your motivation be to honor. The, the memory of your loved one mm-hmm. by being happy and healthy like they, like your loved one would want you to be. Yeah, like uh, if, if I were to ask you, what do you think Mac Miller would want for you? Well, he would be like, fucking dude, yeah, get out there and make music. His last words would, uh, to me were, be safe. And, All right, and, and, and he, Mac would want you to make yeah. music. If Mac heard that you were gonna not make music because he died, that that's not yeah. that's not honoring. I him. think yeah, I think it was just because it was the day after my birthday, and it was just in the right. moment, you know. But I'm I'm not retired at all, you know. My ne- my next album is uh, on my birthday, September sixth. Um, and it's called Diego. Yeah, that's when it's dropping. Yeah, September sixth. September sixth. Yeah, Super cool. so you got all the artwork done. And yeah, yeah, the artwork is uh, on my Instagram. And the, right and, now. The, and it's all mastered. It's all. Um, we still have to master a few of them, and we, you know, we got time to go in and maybe change it and fuck with it. You know? What does mastered mean? Matt, it's 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 like uh, if if you're in a video project like doing the color correction like it's like the finishing the polishing there's like finishing a, there's touches, like an right? engineer like who will record you the engineer will record you make you sound as good as he can doing there but then you send it off to someone like john bryan a great uh master to like make like make it f- sound full in the car like so you know, when they say you got your masters that means you have the final but like does that mean you have the before project before you send it to the masters? No, that's or? a different type of master. Yeah, that's masters just, and master. That that is that, that, uh, that well, master the noun has been mastered and <laughs> such locked. Yeah, <laughs> this perhaps guy's grammar. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, but but yeah see, and the mastering engineer they'll make it sure it's like all the same volume. So if you're yeah, flipping through every, Spotify, so, it's not so like one you, song is yeah, quiet, and, one song and is they loud. Do quality tests for cars, <laughs> earphones, and make sure it yeah. sounds good in every spot. If you ever hear a song, if you turn it up really loud, like the vocal sounds like really like it sounds yeah, bad. Yeah, they, like they gotta make sure mastered. that on every device it's gonna be listened to. Right. It's yeah. gonna sound like a photo. Like the photographer would be like, oh, let me edit the photo. Yeah, you know? the final. Like, kind of. But that's like the mixer. Because like, someone will mix it too. You know, like oh, the recording okay. engineer will record it. Then the mixing guy will be like, okay, the trumpets need to be louder here. The yeah, guitar yeah, coming. Yeah. Then they send just like a stereo file to the mastering guy. And the mastering guy will just hear the stereo file and. Just give it a little more bass or a little more volume or whatever it needs. Okay, I got a couple of questions. Like, uh, you're such an easy 
outgoing, laid back, nice guy. Thank you. But have you had any like really intense rap beefs, like feuds? Feuds. Uh, I think back in 2018 when I was again off my shits. Um, I feuded with this Canadian rapper named Killy. And uh, we just, you know, went back and forth through various social media outlets. Uh, and then um, I had a show in his town and he actually ran up on me. Uh, but uh, my security, like, diffused the situation. But other than that, no. And well, everything's, I mean, cool. everything's cool with him now. Yeah. Um, uh, no, he, we, he, he, he probably still hates me. But, like, I'm, I'm trying to go on this whole peace thing vibe thing i have nothing against anybody he probably still hates me killy i have nothing against you it was a different time i was a different person um and other than that um killy he was just a kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah but other than that walk a flock and ti were coming at me on twitter after the tupac stuff and uh but you know it's all love i have nothing against anybody um i'm trying to really excuse me um trying to change for the better you know yeah. and i have this this sense i love the word clarity i really do love the word clarity you know um and that's what i feel like i have right now and that's why i feel like i'm doing so much better good yeah good. um man I, really I have a question so so the albums when the album's finished it's launching september 6th yes when the night before september September 5th and okay we're gonna blast it out at midnight oh well is, but, is it available for pre-order already uh not yet but in, okay. in a week it will be though so okay. so then okay let's you, do you gather up all the pre-orders or when you hit play it goes to Spotify Apple makes records it like where does it go as soon as you hit play is uh, that like the, the release date how uh, do people cop it like uh, are people well, still buying you, albums you usually put a link tree in your bio that will direct it if you want to listen to it on from the youtube or spotify or apple music you make that link tree and in your bio so you click that and if they would have spotify they'll click the spotify one so when YouTube. you launch it you drive all the traffic to your page and then it, they yes. can go wherever they want yes. from there and we promote it on my page like you know uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh so much you know just driving the traffic through makes get, sense get big uh you know pay a spotify playlist to get it on new music friday the hottest playlist uh get it on big like at rap and at double xl to post like xan drops new music you know do uh, you um do you have a date the the, the pre-order will go live um i do not yet unfortunately you know we're still working on that what's uh, a good number for a pre-order album like to buy like when you're like oh fuck like uh, is it gold platinum like what are those hundred thousand uh, if you like, sold a hundred thousand, like, is like that units? good? Yeah. Oh, it's not gonna sell a hundred thousand units because I've been away for so long. I would be happy if it sold thirty thousand, to be honest, because of how much time I've taken away from social media to work on myself and stuff. I mean, you tweeted out to come to Redlands in twenty minutes. You had two thousand people. Show yeah, up, I so. did. I yo know, and it might yo know, and you might be right. It might do that again. I always doubt myself. I I feel like <laughs> that's the Virgo artist in me. You know, we always doubt ourselves. But what would you be happy with? I would, I would be happy with 30,000. 30, 30, you'd be like, fuck but, yeah. But, but the internet trolls would be like, L, 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 L. It's like, well, you guys don't understand. I haven't dropped anything in four years. I've been absent from social media. 30,000 would be amazing for me. But are, you're not saying 30,000 streams. He's no, you Yeah, like yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there's a difference? And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah streams. And yeah. on top of that, like I said again, it's not even for it's the gone. money for me. It's for just to show them. And yeah. you know, and and uh, evolved Zan yeah. or Diego. You know? Yeah, I mean it's crazy. Like music videos, you you it's like oh that music video is sick, it's sick, and you look at it on YouTube, it's got like eight hundred million views. It's like people love fucking music. They love music videos. Yeah, bro, music. Uh, there's, I mean, maybe this is biased because I know some people that don't actually listen to music or they just listen to top forty. You know. But uh, music is my life. You know, mm -hmm. I think music is, it brings people together. Um, it's, it's, I think it's the best thing in the world. What are you jamming these days? Like, what are you playing in the car? Uh, well, it depends on the vibe. You know, if I'm cruising down the street, maybe some De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, um, I like Young Thug a lot. Mac Miller, of course. Um, there's this new artist Yeet. Uh, you know about Yeet? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Why well, have I heard that? He's yeah, all over Yeet, TikTok. Yeah, Yeet. He's he's funny, man. Uh, Trippy Red. 
Yeah. Trippy Red's really good. Uh, KG Elephant, The Strokes, uh, Arctic Fuck Monkeys. Yeah. I grew up on Arctic Monkeys. Uh, Belly and Sebastian. Mm-hmm. Love Belly and Sebastian. But if you if you were on an island and you can only take one album, what would it be? Uh, oh my God, that's all. all Tupac all is on me. I also wait. I'll, I also <laughs> like. I, I, I also like Drake a lot too, and Kanye. But if I was, what was the question? If you were like, or if you, you know, going to rehab, or if you had to go to an island, and you can only take one album with you. What album would that be? It would probably be the Divine Feminine by Mac Miller. Hmm. Yes, definitely. All right, Steve. What about you? Man, I was just thinking uh, about that. I think I'd do like a Grateful Dead album. Yeah, I don't know, man. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, that album. And if, but if I could take two, it would be uh, what people, uh, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. That's Arctic Monkeys' first album when they were really punk rock. Mm-hmm. It'd be one of those two albums. One that I've just been, my, my latest thing is uh, just pulling up albums on uh, Apple Music, which I just haven't listened to in a long time. And I've been particularly enjoying A Perfect Circle, Mare de Noms. Hmm. Nice. Very yeah. cool. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, like, it, it, and it's more about, like, time traveling to just this, like, this period of my life where, like, whoa, you know? Yeah. Because that's really what music is. Music is, uh, something that you escape record. reality. Well, well it's it, like, a, an album is, is like a blank canvas. And as you listen to it, you record onto that canvas w- that period of your life. So then years later, if you hear that music again, it takes you back to that period yeah, of your life. Nostal- you, you, nostalgic, like you, nostalgia. Yeah, nostalgic. You fuse your moment in your life with this this soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I like that. I've never heard that expression before, but I actually really do like that. Yeah, and, and people ask me like what, what uh, kind of music I, I like, you know, and you know, I just, I, I've always said that... Um, I feel that music is is not as much to be liked as it is to become familiar with. Because as you become familiar with it, you fuse your own experience with it. And so you have that, that identification with it. And so it's less about how much you like the music, and it's more about how, how uh, intimately attached to the music you are. So experience yeah. of music is more about just your familiarity with it i like that i f- i feel like i relate to that on the the gorillas uh the gorillas album with demon days yep like that and, the, and the song demon days and the one that lead i forgot what the first one but it leads into demon days like you just uh, it, it, it means something different to everybody you know like you i, I don't know you described it better than me bro like, <laughs> I, I i i know what you mean but yeah. The other thing too, I was like to say is that music, I feel, is like food. You know, you don't always want to eat fucking donuts. You yeah. know, like sometimes you're in the mood for sweet food. Sometimes you're in the mood for chips and salsa. Yeah, like sometimes you want to fucking yeah. Like you want to change it. You want to change it up. Yeah. Like sometimes you want donuts. Sometimes you want Butterfinger. Yeah. Sometimes Reese's. Yeah. Sometimes. But that that's the problem. That's the problem too with me too. Sue, is sometimes I catch myself just keep listening to the same 10 songs over and over oh, again yeah. my, my highest goal in life as it relates to music is to commit myself to listen to one album and nothing but one album on repeat over and over and over for <laughs> weeks on end so that i've invested this portion of my life in that music and then when i hear it years on down the road it'll take me back yeah i want to i want to like fuse where i'm at and, and i just don't do enough because i keep living in the past by <laughs> by time traveling to previous points in my yeah, life yeah like that that's a nostalgic feeling i like that man i'm resistant to new music and i wish i wasn't so resistant but mm. every once in a while like i, I ask someone hey what's a, a great album from start to finish so i can just listen to nothing but that yeah I did that with your Strokes album. Fuck yeah. Is this it? What, what the Strokes Strokes album? The first was one. Must have been. Is this yeah. it? Oh, is this that, it? I think that would be a, what I would take album. to the you island. You did it again with the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's. Remember when it yeah, was just fever to, to tell it over and over and over? The yeah, 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 yeah. When I was like, this is like, you're going to love this album. But then you're like, play it again. And I was like, we, this is like five <laughs> that, times. That is like, a really good album, though. I so like good. And I, you did that with Maggot Brain, I think, too. The Funkadelic album. I did that with Maggot Brain. Jonestown Massacre? Yeah. Yeah. Alt yeah. J, we did that a lot. Oh, dude, Alt J, big time. 
Start to select with Bam's album. Yeah, ba- dude, Bam's album was. Yeah, Bam <laughs> put out this album, the Eavesdroppers, fucking epic. Well, I walked in. We were on tour in Europe, and I like walked upstairs. I'm like, dude, who is this? This is sick. I have a like, crazy Bam. story with Bam, actually. Dude, let's hear it. <laughs> so I'm from Redlands, California, and um, one day I'm just sitting at my house, and I get a uh, text message because. Uh, I guess Bam's photographer is a mutual friend of mine or something. Ryan G. Uh, sub illegal, sub legal, illegal, some I don't know what it was, but uh, he texted me. He said, "Yo, Bam wants you uh wants to hit you up." I gave him. I was like, "Yeah, of course, Bam." And he hits me up and he's like, "Yo, um, cause I'm from Redlands, California." He's like, "I'm doing something at Redlands Skate Park for like their grand opening or something." <sighs> Oh, this was for, like, he made a music video or something? No, 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 this is something else. That okay. was the when the dude fell through the fucking thing. Yeah, that was funny. Um, So <laughs> he was like, I'm going to hit him up because I know he Zan's from Redlands, you know? So I was like, fuck yeah, I'm stoked. So he sent a, a, a chauffeur to come get me and my friends. But he had a request. He said, can you bring a gun? Because I've never shot a gun before. <laughs> and I was like, Bam Marger asked me for a gun. I got to get a gun. Like, let's go get a gun. Let's make this epic, you know. Let's go to the back wash because there's like, you know, washes back there where nobody's going to hear it and stuff. So hey, are, are you a gun guy? Have you, like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like going to ranges and stuff. And it was a legal gun. Obvi- obviously, it was a legal gun. Um, so the serial numbers were scratched yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bullet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ho- hollow, hollow uh, points. No, but uh, so we went. We ended up going. And um, uh, he did, like, a little interview with me. It was kind of awkward. I didn't know what was really going on. This wasn't terribly long ago, right? Like, about yeah, a year this or was, two? Yeah, this was about a year, exactly a year ago. You know, sober at the time. Uh, <laughs> or maybe, yeah. It maybe could have made, like, a year and a half. Right? Yeah, yeah. It could yeah, it could have been, like, longer. Um, and uh, so we did the skate park thing. You know, it was uh, they were having an event. And people were kind of taking pictures of him and me. It was cool. And then Danny Way was there too. Danny Way was the one that brought him. And I'm a big, you know, I uh, I, I grew up skateboarding. I'm ne- I was never good, but I, I still enjoyed the culture. And Danny Way jumped the Great Wall of China, like For sure. so, you know. And that's who took Bam to Redlands. So I showed up. We all met. I got to meet uh, Danny Way, legend. Got to meet Bam, you know, legend too. It was sick. Um, and then we had the guns. Like, well, let's go shoot the gun. I'm, I'm like, Jesus. I'm really about. I'm in my hometown. With Bam Margera and Danny fucking Way, and I brought them a gun, <laughs> <laughs> and we're about to go shoot it off, and in, in the fields like far away from anywhere where it would be bad. But Bam was telling me he had never shot a gun before, and that's why he wanted to do it. And I was like, Bam, how in the fuck is there any way you've never shot a gun before, you crazy ass motherfucker? You know what I mean? But I, I guess he hadn't, cause he was shaking when he held that gun. Uh, I'll show you videos after this too. I have it. Um and yeah, we went to the the little backwash and and shot guns uh for a little while. Danny Way went crazy on it. <laughs> what kind of gun was it? Uh, it was a, just a, a Glock nine millimeter. A Glock. Um and yeah, and after that, uh, we just parted ways, and that was my Bam experience. Cool. Didn't he like shoot the car or something? <clears throat> Uh, we were shooting at like bottles in the back because uh, we didn't want to shoot our rocks and ricochet and die. <laughs> Why did you post? Did he post on a story one time? He got I don't know. In that I, car. Maybe, he got maybe. his car stolen. That's what it was. He got oh his yeah, car he stolen. was telling me about that. That was that. This was also right after his Bentley was stolen and it crashed. Yeah, so he was telling me about that stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty gnarly situation, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm slightly familiar with it, um, but I'm not, you know, obviously too familiar with the whole situation. Yeah, I see him working out on like Novak's I, Instagram. Yeah, right. and I, yeah, he told me a lot of crazy stories about Novak too. But um, <laughs> like, like I'm not trying to like talk shit on Bam because like all of you guys are legends. You know, Jackass is amazing. You know, Jeff Tremaine and uh, Spike Jones, all you know, amazing people. But um. He just didn't seem like himself. He kind of just... Well, didn't. right. I mean, at that time, he wasn't himself. Yeah, there's there's, know, <coughs> there's he, nothing about... Uh, he was still getting a lot of love from everybody. <coughs> He's a likable right. guy. I mean, yeah. people like him. They yeah. always will. Yeah. And, yeah, there's and nothing negative. <coughs> like, and not, his kid is not, amazing. You know? Yeah. 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 You're not talking shit to say that. That's it. Yeah. And he, everybody wants Bam to be in the best place and, and yeah. happy and healthy. and Yeah. Yeah. I saw the movie too. It was amazing. Well, thanks, I thought man. you guys were gonna like uh, 
go a little less hard since y'all were getting a little bit older, you know. But when I saw Johnny Knoxville get fucked by that bull, I was like, oh, these guys are crazy. Yeah. It, it was it, it was is there right. like are you guys planning on like a, a jackass next generation kind of thing i mean i guess that's kind of what this this uh last movie because i know zach ass and yeah, i know yeah. chad tepper cool. um yeah they uh i mean yeah they brought in zach they brought in poopy they brought in a bunch of new guys to kind of uh freshen it up a little bit yeah you know i don't know what like the celebrities future... mgk i saw that yeah. too I don't know what the future But I always holds. felt I always felt like there should be like a Jackass next generation cuz like Jackass can't just end. It never will end. Like it, it I mean, I don't know. I mean, dude. unless that's what you guys have decided on, but Let, I'll tell you this, when when I found out that after 10 years Knoxville wanted to make another movie, like I thought, "Oof, man, like <laughs> a- after every that now we're so old, that's a, a potential problem." And like after everything that we've survived, like we've come this far, and like now, like it just takes one fucking thing to go wrong, and then the whole legacy of it legacy all just goes it, uh, in the trash. Yeah. So when you say like the jackass, the next generation, you got just, younger kids. I just worry about like taking risks on, the, and it's I, ironic that I should be saying that, you know. But uh, no, but it's it's respectable because I do see where you, where you're yeah. coming from. You know, and and I mean the, the the particularly ironic thing is that I'll be taking plenty more risks, just you know, doing my own thing. But uh, mm-hmm. you're putting out your own album. Yeah, you know? putting out my own album, and, and you know, like it's such a weird thing with Jackass when uh, you know, like putting putting other people in harm's way is, is a yeah, tough, it's it's a tough <laughs> one. I mean, some of the stuff you have coming up is some of the gnarliest I've ever heard in my entire life so that'll be interesting I'm yeah. excited to see that <laughs> yeah, when, you dude, su- when you swallowed that goldfish <laughs> that, that was a long long time ago man that was yeah, day one so uh, okay so how can we help you with uh, you know sending what traffic that we can send for you we want to uh, get you your, your Instagram follow, yeah. follow Lil Xan on Instagram yeah, like I do definitely uh, follow me uh, at Zanxiety it's basically just uh, anxiety with an X in front of it. And anxiety with an X in front of it. Zanxiety. Uh, follow me there. Uh, tw- uh, I don't really use anything else besides that. So that's, yeah, that's uh-huh. really the only place. And uh, presumably... Um this will come out about the same time as pre-order so look up Lil Xan's new album it's called Diego Diego self-titled Diego and this is the last project dropping under the name uh, Lil Xan then everything changes to Diego Uh, I'll let all my social media um, platforms know when the pre-orders go on and everything because uh, like projects really gain momentum on healthy pre-orders so yeah no it is pre-orders really help a lot really important like shoot it to the top man right yeah. because that because when it goes on sale it, like that first week it, it gets all the pre-orders are credited to that first week exactly so yeah. that de- that determines it's the same with books that's why i want everybody to pre-order and everybody is just so pressed about how many albums like how many units you sell it's like bro it's Chill out, bro. Like, yeah, um, and uh, like, where are you at with the with, with the sobriety? Like, you're sobriety. Just, you're, you're, uh, okay, you're okay with the, with the, yeah, with to, the weed. You're gonna keep doing the weed thing. Uh, occasionally, like, uh, I might smoke a joint today, but that'll pro- I probably won't smoke another one for like three days. You know, um, just you know, celebrate and stuff. Uh, you know, with Scott and I are sober guys, both of us, mm-hmm. and I think uh, I can speak for both of us when when I say. If that works for you, yeah. our hats are off to you. Yeah, because let me tell you, I do believe weed is a gateway drug. I 100% believe weed is a gateway drug. But, um, yeah, like, whatever works for certain people. When I was at the Heavenly Center, I applaud them for trying something different. But it wasn't for me. I didn't smoke weed during the process. And they were okay with that. They don't shove it down your throats, you know what I mean? And they really right. did help me. So shout out Steve LaBelle. Shout out Nick. Shout out Matt. Um, Scott, Scott Storch. Scott, Scott Storch, amazing producer. Um, they really, yeah. And uh, today, I just posted on Instagram earlier, uh, it's my 40th day sober. <clears throat> All right. That's super cool. Yeah, and I know how hard that is. So, and you've made it past the hard part. So, yeah, I really yeah. keep there, it up. There I was, mean. yeah, the, yeah, man. The first like three weeks are like really hard, man. Mm. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, if, the, if the weed, the marijuana maintenance, as we call it, if, if that works for mm -hmm. you, then that's great. If it doesn't work for you, then I would just recognize that sooner than later. Sooner so than you later, so it doesn't leave. You don't want to just go around the same loop of like, fuck, I got yeah. loaded again. Fuck, I've I got already, loaded again. Th this is my seventh time in rehab, and I'm trying to make it my last. I feel really good about it this time, and yeah. And I want to thank you guys for having me on. This. You're an amazing Dude. guest and an amazing person. Thank you. Yeah, guys. I yeah, really it's, appreciate it's, that. Like, like mm -hmm. right, right away when we spoke, sure. I, yeah. I, I got the. I know we we accidentally. I was freaking out with my wallet. And he, he's walking in the bar. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, to go act out with donuts, dude. for sure. <laughs> By the way, it, it looks like your wallet showed up. At oh, some oh really? ah, I think so. Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lil Zach got hey, yo, yo, when we were in Vons, I was like, yo, look up what Steve O's favorite snacks are. It's like Butterfingers and Reese's. All right, all right. let's give him some flour. Damn, that's empty. Can you grab that yeah. right there? Just so that anybody who is. Uh, actually, on the YouTube version guys, of I this, swear to God, see. I'm a nice person. He's a please. very nice, no more gentleman. death threats. Yeah. What a Look young this, gentleman! Man. Zan got me uh, Butterfinger and Reese's and a bunch of flowers. Yes, and can, uh, you even, can you even believe that? Oh, dude, here, we need, stick that on me, dude. Yeah, <laughs> stick, stick that on <laughs> all me. All yeah, that's all right. All right dude, here we Yo, go, man. maybe this is for the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hold this? <laughs> I'll hold this. Yeah. Okay, can you take a photo of us, Scott? Yeah. Oh, this yes. Beautiful photos. moment. Wendy, you stay right there. Right, you look, you're doing great. <laughs> Good girl. You want wild right in the back? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for people just listening, we're getting a little photo shoot here. Steve's got uh, the little on. Zan okay, beanie on. We got the flowers good. in the middle. We I got Wendy. Yo, can you, you, just go can to you YouTube for that yeah. shot. Yeah. Let me hear. Yeah. Let me hear. Insane stuff. But yeah, man, dude, I'm rooting for you, bro. Yeah, thank you so I'm, much, I'm, man. I appreciate you guys. Man. I'm, I'm rooting for you. I want this next album to to bring you back to the full splendor of your. Uh, it's gonna be of your peak in 2018. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I really want you to stay sober. <laughs> Yo, I promise. Yeah, I got this. You man. can't promise, dude. That's the definition of uh, addiction. Is that okay? I, uh, the, yeah, you know. Okay. Well, I I will remain sober. Okay. Today. <laughs> He's like, where do I put this shit at? It's all good. You want to airdrop you. it? Or you want to text it to you? Uh, thank, thank you, Lozano. Uh, now tell me, how can you not be rooting for that kid after listening to that podcast? I mean, what a likable dude. I'm rooting for him, man. Like I said, I hope that this next album he puts out is an absolute banger. I hope it smashes. Uh, I mean, and you know what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. I appreciate the fuck out of you guys who stick around to the end of the podcast. I've said this before as well, that more and more when I'm on tour meeting people at my shows, people are telling me, yo, dude, I'm street team. And I love that. So let's go full street team on this one and give Lil Xan some love. He's like, since we uh, recorded this, he's posted about it on his Instagram like five times or something. And it's not even out yet. So he's stoked that he's on the Wild Ride podcast. And I would love it if you let him that you're stoked to let him know. Uh, so yeah, grab a screenshot, post it up, tag Lil Xan, give him some love, and let's all root for this kid to really have a redemption. Thank you, and lots of love. <laughs>